get set up here. We are going to go live on the Atelier Artista website. Hey, Kira, just go over to YouTube. Or in a few minutes, I'll be going live. This is what I'll be drawing tonight. I took this photo in Paris and you can get it on the Atelier Artista website. It's free. I'm not charging for pictures or eyeballs or anything. And we're gonna start in about a minute and a half. If you wanna listen to some crazy rantings, I'll probably talk about Callaway Park and camping and uh, whatever else comes up while I'm drawing tonight. But go, go here. Or go here because Instagram kicks me off every 20 minutes and so then you have to keep joining just go over onto YouTube where things will be live I gotta take this mask off it's hot in here and I'm the only one in here so we're gonna get drawn here shortly Join us. 30 seconds. Call to arms. It's nearly six o'clock and uh, we will be drawing tonight. I'll be using the timer for your Pontomoro timing, uh, which means using uh, every 25 minutes taking a break both for our mind and for our eyes. The Pontomoro timing comes from science and means how long it takes to cook a tomato sauce upon tomorrow. Okay, so I'll be drawing today on this tan tone paper. Let's see, Strathmore tan tone paper. Um, I picked this up I ordered this actually from Swinton's. I don't think you can get it in stock, but I sell them here at the studio for 25 bucks. And uh, I think I have eight or nine pads left. For anyone who's interested, you can get a hold of me uh, through my website, my Instagram, you know, all the billions of ways we do things these days. Okay, so we'll freshen up this uh, composition that we'll be drawing today. This sculpture has two figures in it. So it's a little bit different and more complex uh, than what we normally draw on a Wednesday night. But really saying, you know, what we normally draw is kind of silly because we draw whatever we want, whenever we want. Uh, there are two bodies, male and female together. And uh, generally they fit a uh, square composition. So I won't be using a lot of the bottom here is my guess today. I'll also 
be using my favorite trusty tool, the Pierre Noir Conte uh, 1710Bs. Maybe some generals. I think I might even have uh, some graphite. This is an erasing pencil in here. And some white chalk for uh, some highlights possibly later. My favorite eraser that I complain about missing every week is downstairs in the car and I was too lazy to put on a mask and go get it. And this uh, live stream is brought to you by my favorite drink right here, bubbly. I love this stuff. Okay, 25 minutes on the timer. We're gonna do a general lay-in. I'm gonna uh, draw kind of straight abstract shapes, negative space under his arm, stuff like that. So it might not look like much and it's not the same as doing the Riley method. It's a little bit closer to mm, maybe what I would teach in the Barg drawing uh, system. So let's get this show on the road. Timer's going. Uh, I will start with my Conte. Just looking for one that's got a nice enough point. And um, in my mind's eye, uh, I kind of get a, a plum, a crosshair. However, uh, there is no actual center crosshair. I might use my horizontal uh, where the female figure's legs go uh, because it's a, a long horizontal and it kind of lines up to where her back is. So I'll lay that in first and I'll put it in darker than I normally would so that the camera can pick it up. In terms of uh, a vertical alignment, so dropping a plumb line on this, um, I think I'll go from uh, the approximate middle, which might be from his uh, neck pit, uh, straight down. And it's not, when I measure with my eye, so this is what my eye is doing up on the board. When I measure with my eye, it's a little bit to the left of center. Okay, so I've got a cross here. So this is just to keep me in alignment. And um, when uh, we have the actual figure, the body in here, it's even more important to get yourself set straight because you might have to adjust where you're seated or you might have to uh, move up and down. Maybe you're starting to slouch. But having this general kind of cross here, it just aims where you are. Okay, so his head and her head are, will be in this quadrant. There's not a lot happening in this quadrant. The bottom of her hair, we'll see her hip come down. Her two legs will be in this quadrant and his arm will be in this quadrant. So that way we uh, both know where we are and where we're gonna go, okay? I'm gonna take a quick measure and just uh, look at the subject matter and figure out what relationships we have. We do have uh, the satyr's head length, which is gonna be my base because I can see kind of from where her hand is to top of his head. So it's uh, the same height as it is the width away from here. So I'm going to get in my head. Of course, these things can adjust but I like to do head. Um, if, I, if I can see it, hers is leaning back, but I would go head, chest, hips. You know, if I'm doing this kind of skeletal block in. And I can see the angle of his face. It's almost a profile. His horns will be up here. Okay, so that gives me uh, a good place to begin. So, his neck pit is going to touch the line, so I've got to move this head over actually, make it a little bit bigger. I want to get my drawing, you know, fairly close to the edge so that I could also um, frame this thing if I need to. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger. Yeah. A little bit bigger. So the jaw uh, is five, the whole head is five units tall, but he's also got this wonderful beard. So his is gonna go a little bit lower. 
the side of the sphere is where the ear will go. And from the ear, if we come down to that intersection point, the, the crossbar here, and his chin, that's the neck pit. So that's where my plumb line is living in this case. I'm going to now just draw kind of abstract architecture around his arm. So I'm not drawing his arm per se, but the fact that it goes in an angle like this. It comes down like this. Her leg goes across here. In general, it actually scoops down. So I'm kind of sculpting um, an envelope around the figure right now. They're on a base. There's going to be some really interesting angles. I'm just going to take a quick measure. So this distance is equal to this distance of where uh, the platform is. Right? Just took a little measure off my subject. Okay? So these are the same. So that gives me that envelope coming around. And it just has to be very general at first. We just want to make sure we have a way to fit everything in. One, yes. Top of the head to his chin is equal distance to her arm. And her arm, in general, uh, is kind of a straight shape. Her back is underneath here. And her hips come across. We'll see at the very end how accurate I've been. Her head is about half the length of his head, so I'm just checking. These are just puzzle pieces, really, that we are putting together, except we need to make the pieces, right? It's not like an actual puzzle where the pieces are already defined and you find where they fit. You have to actually create your pieces of your puzzle and have them interlock and fit together and look correct. There's a negative space below his nose shooting across to the head. So if I was to draw a continuous line, it would go like this. So I use my eye to kind of dart across shapes to figure out where things live essentially. There's a big arc going from his shoulder down here like this. So kind of like feeling uh, the space of where that line will go. That's negative space. That's where his body is. Might even come in a little bit tighter. And he's holding on to some fabric here. At about the height of his chin is where he's gripping the fabric. This puts his hand right about here. So let's just draw a little rectangle for the hand at first. Big, simple shapes right now. We don't have uh, the need for a lot more information. We just break it down. Just like in painting, you know, you want to start big, simple shapes, simple uh, colors, no details in the beginning. I sometimes say that drawing is uh, more close to carving wood. I give you this big block of wood, this piece of paper, and we just cut pieces out, cut pieces out. Um, hopefully, we don't have to glue pieces back on. thoracic arch this is where his ribs are coming down the 
collarbone. His mouth is about here, and if we drop straight down, that is where our female model's breast is. I'm sure that's on purpose. Often when I'm drawing uh, this way, things get, uh, they start out bigger, and they get smaller as I go, carving them down further and further. I'm looking off to the side as well. I'm looking this way. So uh, I might have some distortion, but also you guys are seeing some distortion. Uh, just because I'm shooting on top, but at the end we'll have a look and we'll see how uh, how accurate we are. Royal we, of course. Don't judge uh, so early on if things are right or wrong. That'll just stop you from continuing. This is a center line of the body. It's her belly buttons. Somewhere around here. Somewhere. You can use shadow shapes as well. There's her thoracic arch. So sometimes I'm drawing um, forms, sometimes I'm drawing negative space. There's so many modes when one is drawing to consider. I think that artists have a great ability to look at different things many different ways. Because we've got to solve the problem different ways. Those rooms where they lock you in and you have to solve a bunch of problems. They're not all the same problem. They're not like, okay, do one puzzle, do another puzzle. Um, you have to use different types of thoughts, different types of problem solving skills. And that's why it's good when you go into those locked rooms to bring people from all walks of life. You know, geologists, plumbers, everyone is gonna have a different skill set. And maybe take an artist. I don't know if they're as useful. <laughs> a mathematician, you know. Um, while in drawing, we're, we do the same thing. We solve different problems. How, how we see something, though. You can fill your head with knowledge of how to draw noses and whatnot, of course, and learn the name of all the muscles, but that's not how you solve the problem at first. You don't need to know, um, you know, you're studying something, but you don't need to know everything about it at first in order to draw it. Think of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbooks where he's learning uh, anatomy by dissecting. Lucky guy. Well, he's drawing what he's seeing. He might not know what it is. No one knew until that time what it was. And by doing that, he expanded the knowledge for others to learn from.
So for there, I took my pencil, I held it up to uh, the knees, and I just took the angle down, and that lets me figure out where it is. But then I also realize I'm looking at a skewed angle, but uh, c'est la vie. So from where the thumb area is on the, the fist here, I can drop straight down, and that also, using a vertical alignment, tells me uh, the approximate area of the bottom leg of this figure. And I got a little long here, because this we've already defined as the uh, base. So I'm going to go back to that shape, which ends at the shoulder, in order to limit uh, my space. This breast would be a little bigger as well. If only it were that easy, right? Her head is tilted back, which can be very diff a very difficult angle to draw. So this will be a nice challenging area that we'll probably spend a lot of time here later on. Uh, might even have to zoom in your image at home. There's grapes. And her hair, uh, straight down the line, he, we've got you know, an indication of where his fingers may go. He has a fuzzy, hairy, hoofed, cloven leg coming down here. And it shoots off this way. So I can see uh, an alignment here for the shadow, but the leg go travels in the same, uh, the cloven hoof travels in the same direction. When we were out camping this weekend, we were surrounded by cattle, which can be unnerving, but you could see their little cloven hoof prints all in the mud around the river. I was uh, at Old Man River Old Man River. The hoof starts at this top leg. So I want to be sure that I'm cutting this in at the right place. And right now, I think it's too high. That leg started to get a little long. So we'll try to get this alignment again. Directly below the ear is her heel. The olecranon or olecranon is how I like to say it. Everybody uh, that I've talked to has a different way and none of us learned it in school. So if there's a doctor out there who knows, please advise. I guess I could just use Google too. Doesn't matter to me because I can just say her heel. So. We'll try this alignment trick again from knee to knee. There we go. You can already see, you know, there's still six minutes left. We've been 10 or so minutes getting a good architecture here. Uh, we've got this cloven hoof coming. I just like saying it that way. I'm not sure why. Sounds badass. Really, he's a satyr. Like Pan. It probably is Pan. It's I can look up some information maybe at the break of what this sculpture is and who did it because I forgot to save it on the photo in this case. I think it's about this tall too. It wasn't a very large sculpture. Um, 
was an actual size like some of the other ones we've been drawing from are actually larger than life okay getting caught up in the detail that's what you don't want to do at this point in the drawing some fabric drapes down her toes are let me just measure her her head width and her foot width. Her foot is getting quite close to that hoof. So my guess is I just have to extend that there. If I take a vertical alignment, it's just behind the breast. There we go. Her other breast falls uh, at a diagonal and it's happening right by the arm but still above our um, our horizon line here. So I have a feeling I just got this leg a little too long. I'm just going to take a measure from the belly button to the knee is equal from the head to the belly button. Ah, I guess we're looking pretty good there. Let's see that again, which is equal to uh, the vertical space. Okay, big shapes first, which is also equal to that. Okay, so yes, yes, his, his neck line could be up a little higher. I'll bring his shoulder up. The achromium process happening about here. A little bump on the shoulder after the trap and then the deltoid. Well, let's carve out his arm a little bit more here. We have, uh, it goes from wider to thinner and along the bicep. The fold of the arm, the forearm comes down and then goes across. On the top side, it goes up and over. There's a little bulge there. So that might be okay for now, but better than just the straight lines. She's got fabric billowing out here. Her legs. Her thigh is about as wide as the head. Okay. There we go. So two more minutes. I've already got a fairly uh, good lay in here. I'm happy with that. We'll refine in the next section. And I'll remind myself to talk. <laughs> That's part of what I'm supposed to be doing here. So it's tough. It's so quiet. I'm feeling so calm. There we go. Patella shadow. Oh yeah, we'll do some shadow work later. Uh, and the, the ground, I'm going to allow the ground to disintegrate on my drawing. Maybe that ends up being where a signature goes or whatnot. It's fabric going around. And then she's on like this, this plinth here. One minute left. Other hand. It's right here. I often draw the hands as much of a box at first as you can. You know, like a fist. Unless something's sticking out, 
or continue that shape together and then break up the fingers later uh, by drawing the negative space in between. But I really think grouping them uh, at first is your best bet and not getting caught up in those tiny little details right off the bat. So, 12 seconds. And then we'll take a five minute break. I'm gonna move my um, TV over because I'm not looking at this straight on. I'm just skewing it. Take five. I'm going to take a little picture for the old social media. And thanks for joining me. There we go. Also at the break, look at your drawing. Don't forget that that's part of the point. It's to look, not just to get caught up in solving the puzzle. Three minutes. I'm gonna take this huge hand daily multivitamins. Forgot to take them with food earlier. And I'm hungry. I haven't eaten since like 11.30 today. So after this, I'm looking forward to stuffing my face with something. Maybe pick up some guilty pleasures in the drive-thru or whatnot. Je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas.
like this leg needs to go down further. I am going to erase a bunch here. Because upon sitting and looking, but also I adjusted the uh, my reference over and I was looking at it skewed. I'm seeing distortions I wish I hadn't. So I erase, I erase. I'm not starting from scratch, but I'm altering and improving. Otherwise it's gonna look a little bit squished, which is also fine. It's just practice, right? What are we doing here? We're just training our eyes. It's important to keep in mind what the point of all this is. You know, I'm not trying to make a uh, $10,000 painting. I'm just practicing. This is for joy and it should remain fun. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe it's too challenging. But definitely by altering this, um, my reference material, I'm, I'm seeing things in, in a new light here. Maybe the model got a little tired already as well. We gotta keep mindful of, of what our purpose is when we're creating art. I think that you don't have to know what it is before you begin. In this case, we, we know what we're doing. Uh, because we have reference. This isn't the creative part, you know? This isn't me deciding what colors to use. This is purely practice and training, but even your perfect practice can be enjoyable. And it should be, because if it isn't, you might just be doing the wrong thing. Sometimes I have to blow out what I'm doing, you know, just kind of trash it. Do, do the artsy stuff I learned at ACAD. You know, make up uh, excuses for what it was supposed to be uh, if it's not about rendering. But this Wednesday night is long pose normally at the studio. And so the purpose of it is a different type of training. It's a hand-eye coordination thing in some respects. And I think a lot of people avoid um, these parts of mastering their craft. Sometimes you gotta just spend a year doing something else. Uh, I'm still drawing, since I opened the atelier, I'm still drawing with the Conte, even though they aren't as good as they used to be. Sometimes you get a good box. Actually, I will, I'll put that differently. Sometimes you get a really bad box. It might be time, that time of year where I had to order some more too. So I'm gonna uh, make him a little more slender. I think he's too wide and it's not, I'm losing the arc uh, of the negative space underneath his arm. So I'm just going to move the pack over just to be sure I'm going to take a little measurement and that's a, that's doable, it's totally doable. She has her arm behind, okay. I actually might move this over a little bit more. I'm not centered with my subject matter, so. Okay, let's get this show on the road. I like to have uh, my lay-in done, the architecture done, uh, within the first two sittings of the drawing before I uh, utilize my shadow shapes. The shadow shapes can be part of your architecture though. This one has uh, soft light this resource material. But when it's a harder light source, I would definitely uh, use shadow shapes earlier on in the process of sculpting out my drawing.
All right. Nice big chest muscles. There's his ribs coming down. We see a bit of the side, the flanking side. Back here behind the arm, we'll have some muscles, some lat, some oblique that is coming down to the rib. So there is slight um, concave lines. It's not a straight line. Obliques. But in general, it's, you know, it's one big shape. And then here is the asis. That's the top of the pelvis that comes down. And here we're seeing his leg, top of his leg. But there's fabric in front of it coming from the hand. Now I see that this angle, we'll make it swoop a little bit. Okay, I just picked a part that I was interested in and liked. Um, across the chest is actually horizontally where the thumb is. So what may, um, this may help alter my shape. and where the fabric is coming from. I'm also rotating my pencil lots. You can see this is the same pencil I used for the last 25 minutes, but it's still got a super, super sharp point on it. Uh, because as I draw, I rotate. I'm using the paper like, uh, you know, a 1000 grit uh, sanding block. It's sanding the tip all the time. I like to be able to use just one or two pencils. Um, maybe I'll sharpen at the halfway point just to freshen up the tips. But I also like to have at least five ready. And there are so many times in the last two years that I just wasn't ready. And it sucks, especially when you've got people around. Um, figure drawing is a bit of a social community thing. And then you, you've got to sit and sharpen. That always sucks. Uh, now her body I want to be uh, longer to make it a little bit more elegant. It looks very squished here. But now that I'm sitting directly uh, in front of my model instead of off to the side a little bit, um, I can see where I deviated from the actual shapes. She is much longer. His, his uh, leg is much longer. So I kind of, uh, I did okay above the line and this quadrant, but I need to work a little bit below the line and looking off and up uh, really caused me to distort what I was seeing. So make sure you compensate for these things. Otherwise you gotta do what I'm doing and erasing. I, I, I think the eraser is a very valuable tool, half as important as drawing tool, you know? I keep it in my other hand while I'm drawing because it is so important. So his belly button looks like a triangle. And the reason I'm bringing it up is if I can find where that is now, I can use it as a marker. Her uh, groin crossing, her yoni, is about here. So this is starting to help push things down to make them a little bit longer. Right? Her, her leg now, the whole thing moves down because I want to elongate the body. Her belly button ends up being about here. So originally I wanted that um, above the crosshair, but now that I'm lengthening her torso 
quite a ways. But this is going to bring this leg down a little bit too. We want to look like the thing we see here. This is a lost edge here um, between his pubis and her uh, side. It kind of disappears, so we need to depict it as such. Okay. That also helps this look longer and skinnier. From the tip of the thumb, the cloth comes up. Dropping of the knee. So this stuff is uh, staying the same. But everything else around it is changing. Just drop that a little bit lower. Because now her second leg is further down. So there's some fabric in here. I'll just draw it like a rectangle right now. And there's her knee. You know, that little centimeter change um, makes a huge difference in this whole drawing. So, like, turns this way. And scoops it like that. I've had drawing sessions where uh, it took me the first three just to get the lay-in in. You know, I didn't draw last week. I'm feeling a little bit rusty right now. I assume you're the same, except if you're Keith, then you draw every single day like a machine. But since I didn't post last week, Maybe you're just as rusty. It's so nice out there, it's hard to even be inside the studio, except for my house is not. Hey, Jeff's here. My house is not uh, air conditioned at all, probably like a lot of other Calgarians. And it's hell, it's hard to sleep. So being at the studio is wicked because sea space is so cool. It's all temperature regulated in here. We've got the solar panels as well. Pretty much whether it's winter, summer, it's always about the same temperature in here. Big sandstone building doesn't heat up too much, it doesn't cool down too much. Although this year is the first year that I actually turned the uh, thermostat off completely. Okay, she's a little bit longer. Then the fabric just kind of spirals around her leg. So what was the bottom of the, the plinth she was on has now become the top edge of it for me. So we added a little bit of length there and that will help push this guy's coof down. And so you can see the problem where I, I drew a little bit hard and I got a little bit too focused on drawing detail. Now it's a problem because it should be down here. It'll look like he's like slightly kicking actually. But if I go from his belly button down, that will be the top of his hoof. Yay for messing that up. 
I like to use really smooth newsprint. This is feels smooth, but it's uh, made out of a, the Strathmore is made out of a recycled paper. And uh, if you gouge it too much, you, you know there's no coming back. That's why you got to have good planning for this type of work. You know, before he carved this out of marble, he would have built many small maquettes. So a little clay figurine, maybe a small one this big and then bigger. Um, you know, the same goes for paintings. There's some types of paintings you can just jump in. I like the French academic method where they would plan, they would do thumbnails, they would know what they're going after, what they're going for. It's kind of like when you do group projects and there's no clear sign, uh, no clear means of what you're going to do and everyone just jumps in. I have found in my experience over many years that you always just wind up getting mud. You know, things don't, things don't look so good when you're only going with your gut, you know, when you're only being intuitive. We have to temper our intuition to include some planning and skills, you know, keeping a balance. They all have a value in art, different methodologies. And maybe sometimes, you know, you just take your sketchbook and you get it perfect on the first time. That's a lucky day. Okay, getting tied up in the toes and it's unnecessary because uh, we can just draw them as uh, one shape and break them apart later. So, another case of do what I say, not as I do. Well, I'm glad Jeff is here because he is a specialist of these types of subject matters. His female characters have little pokey ears, sometimes hooves. They, lay, they look so cool. All right, so I've got uh, the laying of the bottom uh, part a lot better than it was. We've shifted things down a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go back up and start working on getting the smaller shapes in. Then, you know, maybe in seven minutes, I'll get that done. And then the next session, we'll put in some of the uh, shadows. Still just kind of drawing uh, where shapes go. And I'm using fairly straight lines. I'm not relying on my uh, pencil control to go all the way around a shape at this point because I'm just not there yet. Breaking them up into smaller pieces. chest up a little bit. It's getting too wide.
if you're watching and you've sent me an email recently, I am getting back to you. I have a lot to get through. Everyone is asking about uh, classes coming up right now. I'm getting interesting news from students who were, uh, well, actually some of them are still abroad. Um, one is locked down in Australia and he doesn't foresee that he'll be coming back for uh, our semester because Australia is supposedly not flying out for three months, something like that. I don't know, things are changing so quickly sometimes that it's almost too much for me to bother keeping up with anyhow. But uh, uh, it should be interesting when we start up again this fall. We are starting up again this fall. Thanks, Jose, for getting a hold of me and asking me because I know you guys want to start scheduling your, your uh, fall semesters. So we will be working towards that here pretty soon. But come on, it's still summer. Let's have, in fact, it feels like summer just began. I finally went camping. That was awesome. Got my uh, circadian rhythms realigned again. Wish I could do that every week and I really realize how um, short the summers are here. At the end of this month as well, I'll be teaching for Quick Draw Animation, teaching the, uh, through Zoom animation classes in Toon Boom Studio. So, rather than being down at the location, the funnest place on earth, uh, be doing it probably from this studio. We're also having, um, working on a project with Metro Graphics, and they're going to be moving in a giant wall into the studio for us to paint. And tomorrow night, I'll be finding out about um, a mural project I'll be working on when that will take place. So it's uh, a very busy time. But I'm no stranger to keeping busy. We'll just keep doing these Wednesdays. We will have the Monday starting up as well in September. So I'm just starting to organize the models now. And all our protocols here. It tends to be a really small group anyways Monday morning, but maybe you're, you're gonna wanna join in. So everyone who's already got passes, um, those will still be valid, of course. But maybe you, during lockdown, you're watching this and you've taken up drawing and you've done a couple of these sessions and you're feeling confident enough to come on down, you'll be able to do that. Two minutes left. I got to start a new part of my job today at C Space. They uh, bought this machine that uses a hybrid of bleach to disinfect space. And it's kind of like a Ghostbuster rig where I get to uh, have a hose and it blows this particleized mist and disinfects. And it's what they use at all the airports. And basically they kind of explained it to me. I'm like, geez, you know, should I be breathing this? But it's, they've taken uh, the bleach uh, particle and they've taken out the white, whitening agent. So it's like, after you spray it, it mists in the air and it takes about 10 minutes. It disinfects everything and then it turns back into water. So uh, once or twice a day, I get to suit up and uh, spray around sea space which is pretty neat because I do feel like a Ghostbuster when I do it. Childhood dream come true. I was thinking I would just tell people, like if they ask what I'm doing, that we actually are Ghostbusting. I think that might be pretty funny. A lot of people think this building is haunted. Uh, it's old, it creaks, uh, but I've slept here many nights and I can tell you it's not haunted. 
the lights are automated. I also don't believe in ghosts. So maybe I'm a little bit biased, but uh, I ain't afraid of no ghosts, that's for sure. The cows at nighttime though, yes. A little bit terrified of the cows at night. When we were camping, I was, I swear they were just staring in the trees looking at me, thinking, I'm thinking about dinner. They're thinking about killing me. So let's take five minutes. And in the next one, more refining and then some shadow shapes. I hope that sounds good to y'all. Thanks, Jeff. Sorry, I'm behind on this. I'm behind on the, the uh, type in the comments, but. Five minute break. Time for bubbly.
All right. Get your head in the game. Stretch. Put 25 minutes on the timer. See, we only got six sessions here. Six sittings. So, you know, we're over the hump after this. What, 26 minutes? Anyways, I'll, it's one minute more. I'll talk. Um, so I'm doing more of a, a draftsman type approach. Um, I just felt like drawing this way today. There are other times where I, I grab just charcoal and I'm drawing more painterly. Um, to be quite honest, other than sitting here for this three hours for you guys, um, you know, if I didn't say I was going to do this, I probably wouldn't. And so, you know, by having this promise to you, uh, it's also helping me keep my practice up. And right now, uh, it's really uh, illustrative and, and, and drawerly. I think as things go on and you get more comfortable in your practice, you can start moving towards like that Henry Yan and like wiping and getting more artistic. But right now, because I'm only really drawing for you guys once a week, a uh, little bit in my sketchbook and a bit of plein air, my practice has is, is gone to the uh, during the beer bug. Um, I thought for sure that I would be making 10 times as much stuff, uh, but that really, really isn't uh, the facts of what's happening. So I'm, I'm drawing with lines, really, is what's happening, uh, rather than tonal things, shades, um, more edge control. So whatever you're doing might be different. Maybe some of the things I'm saying might be distracting, but this is what's going on. At least we're drawing, right? So um, there's a definite plus there. Uh, I'm going to work on his head now. Um, he has he has been the whole thing has been squished down uh, because of the angle that I was looking at it and we'll see that when I compare it up against the screen I'm sure um, so but I figure after that I'll start um, just passing down and then maybe doing a second pass I would say that uh, the eyes are halfway through the head so they're gonna be here We'll start with the eyeball and I'm just because I have the main uh, shape in there I'm actually gonna freeform I'm not gonna draw all the structures I'm just gonna go in with it so although it might not sound like I'm too confident uh, having not had enough practice I'm actually confident enough that it's like whatever right whatever Not too worried. It's just a drawing. We learned during this beer bug that we are non-essential us artists. So if I do something wrong here, you know, it's you know, buildings are not blowing up. I tell you. In fact, the social media isn't blowing up. The comments aren't even blowing up. Thank you, Leah and Jeff, for uh, commenting. Actually, I I do look up at them. I'm just not active. Um, typing in on there just because I've got lots going on here with this drawing. Also, it's like really, really small and annoying because of the HDMI cable on my computer. This is a lost edge, so I'll just take it down a little bit. Um, and I speak in tangents, but the uh, HDMI cable shrinks everything, so the pixels are so small on my computer. Um, I can hard, I can't really see. Plus, I'm getting older, and um, so then I, if I look up at the screen, I can see, but then I can't type. So it's all sorts of these things. All right, back to the head here. This girl's got some serious forearms in my drawing. Just gonna park my uh, needable eraser right there. So his brow comes down. There's a, he's like giving a gruesome look. So there's um, the brow at the glabella is really uh, overly characteristic here. It's like comical almost. But you can do that with 
mythical creatures. I've drawn the Barg eyes 10 or 15 times. The idea being that I would memorize them. And here, uh, and all these neoclassical sculptures, you know, the French academic pieces, they all followed that convention. So drawing this eye, uh, it's made up of all the shapes I'm used to drawing, really. Hence, I am not going, uh, you know, it's done. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it too much longer. Shadow shape going up to the nose. His nose uh, its kind of like, a, I don't know, a witch's nose, a, a strong um, Roman nose with a little divot. Now I want to be sure that I do break the head into the thirds on two, so that the nose uh, doesn't get too long. It might actually be too long right now. We'll just put it in. It's a time thing now. Simple shapes. The nose flares up. It's all going to be in shadow anyhow. Then his lip. quivers in. I made his eye a little bit bigger than I see it. Uh, I realize that now, but I'm not so worried. Because we're going to do this face in one go, really. There might be a little bit of alteration, but um, I feel like because I had a fairly good plan, like that's where his chin is supposed to meet up before the, um, you know, that original box shape I drew. In fact, I, I mean, I got asked by Leah, how's it going? And I got to tell you, I wasn't so happy about 30 seconds, uh, uh, three minutes ago. But now that I'm putting his face in, I'm certain that this drawing is going to turn out just fine. Unless I do something crazy, it's always possible with artists. Always possible. Give him a little this cool mustache that he's got here. I've said it many times in, in uh, previous uh, drawing sessions. If you want to learn to draw hair really well, look at the sculptors, how they deal with it. And this is a great example of that. I elongated his nostril a little bit. Make it a little bit more flared out. A little bit, mine's more of a, a caricature of what I'm seeing. But I was talking about how, you know, I, I'm doing this practice here, my regular Wednesday. Since I opened the studio, I've missed maybe 10. I could probably count them on my fingers. Um, because of various events, life things come up as well. But I want you to create a habit for yourself. Consistent practice leads to consistent growth. I don't know if I read that somewhere. But when I started this atelier, I mean, I could draw. I never learned in art school how to draw this way. I thought, you know what? This will be my master's degree. And the byproduct of that, that I didn't realize I was going to have, was that by hosting these drawing events consistently, that I would have that practice. And I, you don't know where your work's going to go in a lot of sense with art, right? And, and that's okay. You want to get better. I think we all agree that that's probably the one goal. <laughs> but um, you might not know what that's going to look like. You know, I'm looking at influences 
things are changing in my life. Maybe I'm picking a different color of paint. And art shapes us as artists. You know, our news shapes us. Our thought processes get shaped. And so you can't really know the end result. It's a process, right? The artistic method is very much a process. And although I want this to look real and like the thing I'm looking at, maybe I pull out some colors and do something else that leads to something else, right? This road is a windy one. But in all of that, by showing up, doing my homework and practicing, I have this portfolio. And these are the pieces I didn't sell, but the portfolio of hundreds upon hundreds of drawings that I like and each one I learn something new from I'm not so attached to keeping um, these I've been selling these ones from these demos not as my art but as practice drawings so it's a different thing for me okay Oh, thank you for that comment, Jeff. That's really good. So, see, I look up a little now again. Finding out what we're doing. I, I want to read it. Uh, Jeff says, one thing I find is you don't know uh, what good art is until you learn it. So it's hard to predict where your practice will end up. And I, I just think that that, I totally agree. It's so true. And then you find artists you, you didn't know that you would even like. Um, Jeff was telling me about the Orientalism art. I like um, uh, I'll, I'll, um, Tadema, um, Goodward, and these artists, um, like pre raphael light artists, I didn't know I would like them. I didn't even know about that movement. And I started to discover artists within it. And then, you know, you learn different ways of applying paint because you go on that journey, finding out more. Ooh, so here's something funky. Her arm got really slender in my drawing, I feel like. Okay, this is all in shadow too. It's a back arm, so who cares? When I'm shading, I'm using the pencil um, this way, not the tip anymore, so. I think maybe I need to just move this nipple over. Because I drew his face a little bit bigger, some of the architecture is changing here. This is not as accurate as the, my last few drawings have been. And that's okay. It's okay. We're not essential. We're important and uh, needed, but not essential. No one's gonna die. That would be super weird. If I found out after this, it's like, Bunny, you know that drawing you did? Somebody died. I'm loving how that's looking. So we'll just continue on with that. I'm gonna move her hand over slightly too in my drawing. Um, it's cause I feel like I need a little bit more room. Her fingers curl up. They're already kind of described there, but here, oh, the fun part, his horn. It's actually got a lost edge on it, so we'll keep to that. Sometimes more, or drawing less is more, right? Let's keep it simple. Kiss, keep it stupidly simple. Or keep it simple, stupid, if you have negative self-talk. I like it, keep it stupidly simple. My stepmom used to always say to me, simple things for simple minds. And uh, I had this, I grew up in BC, uh, and when it rained, I'd love to go outside. I, it doesn't rain enough here for me, not even this year. I know some of you gardeners out there are pissed off right now, especially those of you who have a slug problem. You don't like the rain as much as me, um, but 
What's really cool is you can take an umbrella I discovered and throw it straight up in the air. Now, I, it was an acreage, so I had a lot of room to do this. You throw an umbrella straight up in the air and it just like is like a rocket ship. But no matter what, once it goes up, it has to come down. And rather than pointing down like a rocket, the air will catch in the umbrella and it will open up and be like, Foof! and then it will glide down. And then I would run around and try to catch it. And so I would run in and be like, Christine, Christine, did you see that? Did you see my game? And she'd say, sample things for simple minds. But, you know, I had a lot of fun with that umbrella. <laughs> As silly as it looked, probably, looking out the picture window at me running around like a jackass, chasing this umbrella as it came down. All right, uh, his hair uh, f follows a line, which is uh, parallel to this brow line here. Right, so we want to, I'm just gonna darken his eye a little bit more because in rubbing, I, I kind of lost it. And I'm just gonna draw the general shape of it first. Now there has to be some distance here between um, the hair and the orbital, even though it's coming forward. We don't wanna lose that. So this is helping me place the ear. The ear, which I had that line going through, yeah, he doesn't have a pointy ear. I thought for sure a satyr would. And the bottom of his ear, so if I ran a line this direction, across from his nose, that would give me the bottom of his ear. So I've actually got a fairly strange looking ear here. When I see these sculptures too, like they're marble. You should be able to touch these. Maybe they got tours, if you're blind, you're allowed to like touch the artwork. Cause you could just, it's rock, right? You could just wash it off after. That would be cool to go on the feeling tour. Feel what this marble sculpture is like. Try to see it with your hands rather than your eyes. They do have uh, those interpretive uh, rooms where they ha do have casts um, for the blind, which is pretty cool. They have them all over in all the places in Europe I've been at least. I mean, it's one room, it's not the whole collection, but maybe you could take that tour one time. So I'm going to move on to her hand a little bit because this is also time sensitive. I'm not going to spend more than the amount of time we have here um, to work on this drawing. I call them done when they're done. Time is done. So I'm going to move down the hand and just, you know, just start trying to render out areas. Just so that I have something to talk about. That's all, that's all, guys. That's all. That's all that I'm trying to do now is fill airtime. I am not yet a Joe Rogan. He was a stand-up comedian, professional commentator. It's, it's hard to talk about what you're doing this long. And I gotta tell you, I could. If this was painting, there would be no way I could talk and do it. I I find it hard to talk while I'm teaching painting. I don't know why, it must be a different part of the brain is getting used to it, I guess, but I've drawn long enough that I could ramble about nothing. It's like, I don't know, it's like a different part of my brain, I think, than painting. Painting or color work, I guess because there's so many uh, thought processes with color. I'll change out my pencil here. That one's getting a little bit dull. Um, Maybe it's because there's all that color mixing that I, f I just go totally silent. I even, except for classical music, I, I prefer to paint 
in complete silence. Um, I like to hear that, especially when Jeff is in here drawing. I can hear it. I put the mic close to this, so maybe you guys can hear it too. So still drawing straight ahead. I'm trying to keep my relative shapes and sizes. I already have the plan. So as long as I kind of stay within my original box. Now I don't have the hand here, so there's a really neat weaving going on here. Kind of looks like the uh, Sartorius muscle. Top finger the rest of the hand. This is her hand or trying to rip his hair out or whatever's happening. It's up to interpretation I think. She looks like she's not being raped, like it doesn't look negative. Um, it looks like she's in pleasure. so much about all the hair details right now I can just indicate a direction it's time sensitive right let's move down Ophelia Odyssey, thank you. I'm glad you're joining me. I do keep forgetting to look up at these messages, but just keep on it, dude. We're going to keep going. I guess there's one other benefit for me for doing these drawings, and that is I have something to post to social media. It has been so nice not having to do tons of stuff. I didn't even see my computer for four whole days here. Uh, that has been joyous. As things start up, amping up again, uh, have to have more presence, you know, that's just the way of the world. But uh, it's been really nice. Just keeping her cool here. Got his beard got a little bit big here. But, you know, doing these drawings at least gives me something to post. I moved his neckline over a little bit based off the fact that I made his beer a little bit too wide here. Bad bunny. Keep to your plan. You don't want to deviate now, especially if it was looking good. The small shapes shouldn't change the big shape plan.
That's where it's things start to look weird and distorted if you're not careful. Just keep to the plan. All right, under his neck here, there's some folds. Like I said, my beard got a little bit big, but there is a, a really sharp edged cast shadow going across the peck, the divot in the peck, because the peck is made up of more than one muscle, uh, sh sh more than one muscle strand. And so let's use that to our advantage. Hard edges where you can get them. They tend to be in the cash shadows. Because I'm on this like gritty paper, I do need to take a stump and uh, rub in. So on a smooth newsprint, I wouldn't have to do this, which would remove a job. Um, I also like the look uh, of the roughness. In fact, I put it back on top. Whoa, break. I don't even want to break. But, it's tradition. So let's take five. This will then be halfway. I'm going to take a little snapshot for the old social media. You guys take five. I hope you're listening to the music you like. We're moving along here. I'll do a close in too.
40 seconds. I realized I should have peed during that break, but instead I texted Jeff and Leah and fell into the trap of social media. <sighs> These things happen. These things happen. <coughs> okay. Now, I'm going to be doing shadow shapes. Um, and we'll intensify them because my photo, uh, although I did do some alterations on it, uh, we're going to use some of it um, just using the side of the pencil to darken some areas. So, 25 minutes. This is the halfway point. And so there's three more sittings and it's all downhill from here. So 25 minutes. Uh, of course, you can keep drawing after nine if you want. Um, I, I'm gonna call her done at that point and go get myself some food. But let's, uh, let's see where we can take this in the time given. So wherever you are, you can just focus on an area but figure out how to get the most advantage out of your time. So, let's see here. My arm got way too fat. Her arm got fat, it's her fault. Not my fault. Okay, so we'll skinny this arm up. And using the side of the pencil, the, the firm and soft side, I'm just gonna start putting in some shadow shapes. Across from the breast, we have um, the end of the ulna. And so I feather it towards the light side and I keep the point um, to the dark side. And that allows me to have a softer edge here uh, during the turning of the form and a harder edge where uh, my line, so to speak, is ending. Of course, you can use your finger too to, to smooth it out. So we're drawing shadow shapes now in the arm, down to where his fingers are. There is a uh, a cast shadow so now I'm using more of the tip here in fact it goes up a little higher we have the breast there's a fold it's catching a little bit of our arm in the background but really we have a cast shadow which raises up this arm going across the chest so you can see I have a little V maybe you can't see that on this angle and then it goes underneath now that turn so hard edge here. That turn kind of signifies a half tone. I'll just put the half tone in a little bit darker than it should be. Same as on this breast. So maybe with the half tone, I'll leave it kind of uh, that rough texture to show the roundness of the breast here. And then a shadow shape for the nipple. There's a shadow underneath the breast. And a shadow under the arm here. It's like a fold, the tendons of the armpit. And there's another one somewhere around here. So we're just putting in, blocking in shadow shapes. Try, you can see my hands a little bit dirty. Try not to smudge and so by going this way, uh, I'll smudge less. I won't be picking up the dark uh, on my way down. Okay. Above, oh, I put her breast too low. Good one, bunny. Sorry, the nipple itself. Hopefully not saying nipple won't get this off YouTube. <laughs> okay, maybe I leave her face uh, lazy. So down here, I have the shadow. All this is in shadow. All of this area is also dark. I can only see these little half moon shapes 
uh, of the satyr's fingertips. So I'll draw those in. They're kind of hard, hard edged. And then the folds of her skin. So all that's dark. We're going to do this. We're going to be cheap and uh, cheat wherever we can. There's his nail dark. In fact, all this is dark. So maybe I'll just throw and that this is great because now I hide my mistake with the hoof. Speaking of hoof. I, okay, wait, we'll get we'll get down there. So, okay, I'm getting excited again here. This fold uh, lines up behind this finger. This one here. And so there's another fold. And here I've established his uh, furry leg. So I can kind of draw in the fur. I have the shape. I like to push up and pull down when drawing hair so you get different thicknesses and points and it makes it look like you did a lot more work than you did. Wiggling the pencil back and forth and allowing it to sharpen my pencil believe it or not. It's a graphical trick. Um, I don't know. I want to say that I developed for myself. It just came about. Um, I didn't read about it in any book or anything. but. It works. So his this dark area from the hand, um, you know, you can kind of see where the knuckles are, but this allows me to hide my mistake. Woo! Loving that. And also find that directly below the fingers, across um, his leg here, is a cast shadow into darkness. All of this is dark. You can see a little glint of this fabric, but everything else is dark. So I'm just going to put it in like that. This hoof here is, is catching the light. There's a cast shadow under it. So I'll just make it dark. Make this dark. I might even go a cast shadow on her heel and under the leg. So not only is there the core shadow from the leg here, there's the cast shadow. All dark. And those two can be the same thing. Um, so on the top of her leg, there's this little bulge that happens down here. And that's the only thing that changes the direction of this core shadow traveling up the leg. And uh, it tends to be rather straight and square along the, the longest part and flat of the quad there. And then we have some folds happening here. Fold already established from earlier drawing from the hoof or from his knee, kind of curling. And so that changes the shadow shape here as well. So that's all dark. Now we're making some headway. Blocking in our shadow shapes. There isn't light uh, on the lower leg. If you squint your eyes, you can see a little strip, but it's still uh, pretty much in the dark. So let's make our lives easy. And just pull the dark in. I can erase out the light later if there is any. Okay, traveling up the leg to the knee there is a square shape here I'm just gonna check to make sure it's where I need to be yes there'll be reflected light up here my knee might be a little bit longer out and it's got some half tones on it so I can leave it that way refine the shape there's a cast shadow under this leg so even though I have that, so that's a hard edge. Hard edge. Meaning a line. All right. I do have to smudge it, so I'll have to put those um, hard edges back in. So I'm not so uh, committed to it right now. Half tone uh, to kind of show the breast shape. 
half tone from the side of the body and there's also a shadow there um, directly above his knee it's dark it's dark and I'm drawing towards the light so if I pull it with my thumb I get my half tone I go from the dark into the light from the dark into the light that's also the way that I would use my smudger as well my smudger this whole leg is dark there is a little bit of kneecap light on there but you squint your eyes squint your eyes reflected light uh, which is happening here but to show it I put a dark beside it and then under the leg I have a I'm using the tip and the tip uh, is breaking and I'll lose the point because Whenever I'm doing these, I go dull real quick. Cast shadow shape. And that's the dark. Darkest dark. Cast shadow. And it's got kind of a point shape because there's a piece of fabric coming up. But it's a hard edge. So that helps me form the shape. But we want to keep it simple still. I'm drawing and leaving a space. So it's already got tone on it. But that's the reflected light. So I'm actually pushing my pencil the opposite way in order to maintain some of that light. So smudge it in. Soften it up right now. And then you'll see the variety there. I can clean this edge up later. Because that's going to be a hard edge on, the, on this side of the leg. And it will be light. But I go from the dark to the light. Because then I, I, I'm automatically getting a little bit of half tone put in where I need it to be. I can go, I'm going past the area. It's okay. It's okay. This is the painterly part. You can be a little bit messy. You can always, if you have these little edges, just take your eraser and erase it out. And rub your finger and soften the edge. The darkest darks will have to be made darker again. It's all going to be time dependent, of course. I do want to have some toothiness. And I don't want to smudge uh, my satyr's hair too much. Because I want those little lines to indicate fur. This all has tone on it. Remember our paper is already toned. So it's the part that's just slightly, uh, there's light and then it's going towards the turning of the form is what we're dealing with being the paper value. These are white marble sculptures, but except for the highlight, there's not really white. Okay, a little bit more smudgy. Maybe we'll get a little bit more drawerly as well. The uh, in females, the rectus abdominis, uh, you don't see the separation like we'll see on him. So they tend to look like the erector spinae up the back, like two cylinders. And so we just have a light half tone coming down here. And the rest here, very large, flat areas uh, with the light hitting towards, won't have tone. Here we'll have some tone. On the breastplate we'll have some tone. Just like that. And then we have a little bit of light uh, on the breast showing its, its roundness of its form. So we'll move down. All of this can be fortified again with more drawing on top more darkening let's get this area done now so we've got some of this quadrant lots of this quadrant some of this this can definitely use more uh definition but you know we still have uh, an hour of drawing or so so we just got to figure out what's important i'm gonna put a little bit of time into this belly button
He's got a line coming down, but just gonna work his torso. This is all half tone. Who knows, I might even make my guy a little bit more muscular. It's art, I'm allowed, right? So my thought is he got a little wide again here. So I'm going to push my line over underneath the armpit cast shadow so I'm gonna start up there I'm gonna bring him in a little bit bring it in I mean it might not look like that much but to me it's a lot bring it in rain it in that helps that negative shape look a little bit longer as well bring it in and the oblique So the oblique, so what I'm trying to do is make this dark triangle shape here. That's my ideal. It should be dark like this. Maybe I'll have a, uh, their bodies are running at diagonals this way. You see, diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. So maybe I'll have a tone of diagonal, like an X pattern um, going across here. So all of this will be dark. I'm turning the pencil and actually using it, this technique right now to help me sharpen my pencil. Because when I draw like that, I lose the point again. So bicep comes in, a little flat there, and then forearm comes out. Just sculpting it with the dark. But this negative shape was very important to me from the very beginning, this triangular shape. So what I'll do, is I'll rub it in, and then I'll go over top of it again. And maybe uh, allow some of that texture to live on top. This is some of my darkest dark, same as here. To get dark, rather than pressing really hard, I would prefer uh, you layer it. So put another layer on top. Let it change the direction um, that you draw with your pencil. From the side, paper uh, is like a bunch of little holes or something. It's little pores. And so sometimes you might, it's lighter here. You might not get any. So maybe I'll go this direction this time. Just to ensure that I'm getting in those spots. So we'll go a little bit darker. Change the direction. But maybe keep some of that gritty look. and I can draw on top of anything. Now, this is gonna be a danger zone, of course, if I drag my hand over, but eh, we'll worry about that later, right? So from the bottom of those knuckles, the fabric comes down and then starts to turn towards her leg. So I want to um, do some more dark. Here, if I was doing charcoal, this would be the most painterly part. Go back to this deltoid. When I look at this at the break, I'll also decide, sometimes I, I'll leave things soft like this. And I was saying that this the ground was gonna disintegrate here anyways. So based off time, I'll figure out where to put my energy and focus and I don't think I need to worry so much about this outer edge. Um, I can draw it dark uh, and I can just pull some of this tone to give me that kind of X, this sort of drawerly composition. So I'm still turning it so I don't wear a flat spot uh, in my pencil. So that's sharpening, sharpening on the paper. And I hope you can hear this. Pull my smudge stick the same direction. Sh 
sure. Whatever. Looks like a cave or something. Or will do at the end. This will be light, so I'll just clean it up as I go. There's a fold in this fabric. There's not a lot of light on this, actually. Kind of here. So we got a half tone here and more half tone here. So we'll put, it might even be a little bit darker than that. It's starting to pick up the values now. Couple folds are in the light, but not many. So we'll put those in. Her knee is in the light, so I'll erase out the light. There's a little bit of light here. Some reflected light here, but we uh, need not worry about that area. I'm gonna crisp up this line a little bit. Now that my pencil's sharp from that last drawing bit. Now he has, oh, he has uh, a shadow cast possibly from the arm. It's softer, it's not a hard edge. And a shadow under the uh, thoracic arch here. So it doesn't. There's a little diamond shape uh, in the pack here. It's a hard edge as well. That's a cast shadow. So we can actually draw that. See how I'm changing my arm position. And the pack is defined by that shadow. So here, same thing. An over accentuated shape for sure for this sculpture. I'm using the tip of the pencil, making it hard edged. And a cast shadow going over this uh, little roll. Draw the roll. So the roll has the line, which is the cast shadow, and then you pull up towards the light. And then this shape here. And that, she's, there's a nice hard edge here, the side of her body her rib going up and then the stretching out. This was a lost edge, so I need to not draw there. There are some areas you have to not draw. It's how our eye sees more than what our brain knows, right? You guys all know this. Just fill in the air. Okay, two minutes here. So I'm just gonna keep working. Now, um, these shapes, these muscle shapes, oh, and that cast shadow, are not in the light. There's a light edge. So I want to get material on there, and I can use my pencil to do kind of a cross hatchy line in between them. And if I need to, I can erase out, right? So don't be afraid if you rub something too dark, you can always lift it off. Just be mindful of what is hard, what is soft, what is the cast shadow, what is core or form shadow? That's why we have all these terms. We wouldn't have separated all those things just to make everyone's life difficult if they weren't important. In uh, describing form. This is light here. It's like a little rim light. You can see the bottom of his 40 there. Oh, this is dark. So instead of it being a line, it's actually a separation between light and dark, but we can be illustrative and, and use a line in this case. Line shows overlap, showing that she's closer than he is. He 
He's got a little bit of satyr fur here going down to uh, his nether region that we can't see. Soften up these tones a little bit on this paper. Okay, this is all, I actually don't even need to draw it. There's enough material here that I can just smudge it in. And then redraw the darks, the hard edges if I need to. If I lost something, some details. Whoa, Whew, it certainly is downhill here. We're gonna take five minutes. I'm actually gonna pee this time. Hopefully you're making some headway on yours as well. Five minutes. Mary, that's a deep and heavy question. I will attempt to answer it. I feel like it's, uh, it's passion for sure. You know, he represents the animistic side. She looks to be pulling and twisting him, but she is arriving in ecstasy, you know? And it looks to me like she's kind of fallen down this way, but rather than unclothing her, it actually looks like he's grabbing that cloth and trying to cover her up. But let me take that quick pee. I gotta get my mask to go in the hallway. Where did that go? Up there. Wait, also, wait, also, also, while going pee, I'm gonna wash my hands so that in the next sections I'm not dragging uh, material all over it. So, segue. Three minutes. So that's the benefit of taking a pee break. Maybe not every break. Um, to get yourself some nice clean hands again. Because we always wash our hands after we see a man about a horse. Since kindergarten at least. Maybe not when you're camping. But uh, I always have to pee because I've drank two bubblies by this point. 
All right. Fifty five seconds. Whew. I don't know if we're going to get this bad boy done or what. Um, let's hope. Let's hope. I hope that your drawings are going good and I look forward to seeing them. I know time's still running, but I'm going to do a little cheat right now. I'm just going to uh, put some more background in. Now Keith always says that uh, breaks are for backgrounds. So I'm going to just put a little more background. I, I probably leave it pretty drawerly. But just to continue the shape, because it looks a little weird if it's like a, a spot, you know? So, we'll just go like this. Whip it up. Sure. Okay. I got to tighten the ship. It's just after 8. 25 minutes in this setting. Whoops. This way I won't lose my mask. We'll just put it right there. Um... We'll see what we can do. This is going to be the big one for the drawing uh, because in the last one, we take a little break and then time gets cut down. I do try to finish by nine as promised and uh, I do like to do the little critique at the end. So let's get the show on the road. Maybe uh, her face needs a little work. I have this sign from last time, uh, but I'm going to put it under my hand. I did just wash my hand and there's a lot of material on the paper now, so we have to be more cautious. Even uh, before I uh, give these drawings off to their purchasers, I tend to have to clean it up with the less intrusive needable eraser. Anyhow, we got a fresh pencil again. Uh, her arm is running behind and there is from, hmm. Hmm, the breast, there's a little fold. So the, her arm actually has to come down here, like that. So we may, we may have a problem here, Houston, in terms of uh, the shape and size of her head. Maybe her head needs to be smaller. But have yourself uh, a bridge or a piece of paper to protect your work if you can. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna eyeball it because I don't have the time to worry. Oh, I see what's going on here. Okay, so what happened was, this is the shadow from the arm. There's like shoulder in there. And her chin ends up being lower down. So I just had things too high up. So we're okay. We're okay size wise. Some of this represents hair. So her whole face uh, is kind of in the dark. There's this chin. Maybe we'll just indicate uh, some features. Squinting your eyes, showing what's light and what's dark. That might be all we have time for. And on this side, there are a few lights. She's got grapes in her hair. So we can just indicate some shapes and then lift out a little bit of light here. This arm though is not in the light. This arm is connected to this hand somehow. Hmm. And this is his arm holding her connected to that hand. So I don't know, her arm might just be going up behind this arm. It's hard to see in my photo because I can actually see a sculpture through here. Hmm. So this becomes a lost edge. So I'm going to go across it, break the line up. Anytime you have the uh, chance to make a lost edge, please do it. It does make for better looking artwork. Hmm. 
in my humble opinion, of course. Let's see, I'm going to guess and draw a wedge shape here for the nose. Hopefully this doesn't ruin my whole piece, the nostril. If that's the chin, right? This angle sucks if you get it wrong. <laughs> There's a lip, the upper lip we see, and it's a Cupid's bow. So, got to draw it that way. You can see some teeth. Shadow, and it connects to the shadow. Jeez Louise. I may have put it too far uh, north here. I don't know if that's actually north. Okay. Bridge of the nose, shadow, cheeks. Shadow. So if I connect here, there's like an upturn to the eyes. Oh boy. It's a time thing, guys. Who knows if I'm really screwing this up or not? I won't know till the end. Probably, though. I feel like that eye is definitely in the wrong place now. Oh boy. Should be much closer to that nose. When I said eyeball in it, I didn't think I was going to mess it up like this, but you win some, you lose some. Ah! Broke my pencil. Garbage? Oh wait, it's still okay this way. The pressure is on. I could have just left her in the dark too. But even just a little indication can go a long way into making it look like, you know, you did a lot more work than you did. So there's her brow, her forehead. We might survive this. Some more little grassy or leaf shapes. hair soften this up Phew. better bring my forehead down there. Lots of light there though. Ah, it looks like an up of a face. Wavy hair. Grapes. Circle, 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 circle. Grapes, 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 grapes. Indicating some grapes. Because we will run out of time. We can't draw them all. But look for the darks. Grapes, 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 grapes. Hey, that works pretty good. Okay. I didn't really draw the shadow up here. Uh, 
coming down the hand this way and then down the forearm. Now when you look at this uh, reference photo, you really got to squint down to see this stuff. I always uh, darken my darks darker than they need to be because that's all the lateral movement I've got, especially when I'm on paper like this, right? Like I don't have uh, a lot of give here. I can put some white highlights on for sure. Let's work the parts of the body I've been avoiding and his uh, hoof as well. And because I haven't done this move in a while, let's go with some, there. Zoom in, I'll try not to put my big fat head in the way. Okay, he's got some fur. His hoof is a dark shadow. And actually it curls around and down. So let's show that because it's coming off. There's a separation in between. I'm not sure how, um, you know, to, I don't know where I'm going to go in these drawings to make these videos better for you. Maybe I actually do it step by step in the future. I don't know. Hopefully this is engaging though and you guys like these. I need some encouragement to keep doing them. Oh, sorry, got off the page there. See, I gotta pay attention. Anyways, working this area a little bit, it is in the dark, so I have smudged on it. And I'm using um, the side of the pencil, the Conte to do it. Maybe pull a little bit of texture onto this hoof. It's kind of a cartoony bit in here, in my drawing at least. Dark in the cast shadow. I wish I could go darker. Honestly, it would take its time to do that. You know, getting in every little crack. Okay, draw her body now. I might have to draw this foot too. Maybe I've been doing something called avoiding this area. When I look at the sculpture, obviously I can see more detail, but I also need to be sure to uh, not over show what I know and to have it behave more like how my eye sees. So below that fold, we have the hip coming down straight. We have the fabric with the cast shadow on it. Let's see if I can get this foot in here. So one of her toes Horizontal alignment here. Okay. This might be crazy. We're going to try it. Fabric goes in. There's her heel. Points to the big toe, which is shorter than the next toe over indicating not actually drawing all the way around each individual toe but there is a shadow underneath the toes they're they're sitting off um, the ground here and then there's some folds of fabric it's a cast shadow though that's lifting her foot up it's a little rectangle shape there oh yeah 
move it up a little bit, sorry. Ankle, hmm. Made a mess of this area. Ankle up here. So it needs a bit longer foot. And maybe I can just do the trochanter right there. That will help. And there's a cast shadow all the way around anyhow. We can hide that. You can hide things in the dark. Turn that into the cast shadow. Cast shadow underneath. The shin here as well. Terrible, terrible foot today. Can't be helped at this point in time. There's like rock here. I can do this kind of thing maybe. This part of the hoof I'm gonna lighten. This part of the leg. Just draw some more hair. Use the uh, eraser to just lighten it up a little bit. I can see where um, things change in his back leg, but it might be too much data for this level of drawing anyhow. Folds in the fabric beneath her. Okay. It's disintegrating down here anyhow. There's a half tone on his chest. He also has uh, cool chest hair. His clavicle going up to the chromium process cast a shadow and it's uh, slightly curving, right? Oh, sorry, gotta zoom back out. Lost myself there. If I squint my eyes, I can see that the chest has some tone on it. Very light. And we have the yellow of the paper, the tan tone. There's also up here, it's always a deep shadow. Right, the chest muscle is going this way. Everything else is going to this clavicle. We've got lots of little details in this neck here. Sternocleidomastoid from the uh, ear down. I have a cast shadow under his ear, which is his hair on his neck. Showing the three dimensionality there. I don't know if I wanna go too much more into the space. I could put some more hair, maybe, to help fool the eye into thinking there's a lot more detail going on. I'm going to take out any linear lines as well, anything that's straight. She got a little fold under her finger. So there still is one session here. I'm dancing around now. Um, Trying to find areas 
to make it look better. This leg would be one for sure. Just like that. But I can also leave this kind of drawerly or painterly, whatever you want to call it. I'm losing my terms. I've been talking for two and a half hours straight. Woohoo! Is there a prize for that? Because I want it. I hope the prize is pizza, waffles, something delicious. I'm going to shade this lower side more. Boy, oh boy. Two figures, tied up. I didn't pick an easy one, did I? But it's a fun one. That's right. Fabric, 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 rock, rock, rock. Sure. And the lights in the studio went down because I haven't moved in a while. You race out. The lights, the thoracic arch here. Maybe I'll indicate his fingers a little bit more. I feel like it's a it's a good focal point to see where are the where's the weight, where's the pressure. Right, wherever you draw uh, detail or high contrast, uh, the eye will tend to uh, gravitate towards. It's also how cameras focus. Do a little more on this forehead. Because she's pushing him, you know. This can all be a little bit darker. This negative space. Shape here. And continue it up a little bit. this side I would love to spend the time on this hair but it's not gonna get me anywhere I'm gonna use my smudge stick and uh, just soften everything that I can it's easy to make a soft edge hard but it's harder to make a hard edge soft so by softening here, I can go back on top and uh, re-harden things if, if need be the case. And that also is what I'm making darker. So don't be afraid to smudge out your work. Don't be afraid to erase things and draw over top. We have to get command of our tools. Presuming you care about this stuff. You can just fart around too. I'm fine with that. I definitely want to keep working towards being a better draftsman. When I see my heroes draw, um, those who I can see, those who are alive, they're just so accurate. Like they know where the lines go, so quick, um, so efficiently. And that's gonna take a lifetime of practice. You know, knowing where things go. Definitely getting better at it over time. That's the point of practice, really. Um, I would like to 
you know, everything to be a lot easier putting it in the right place, especially because really the reason I'm drawing is to be a better painter. Uh, the more drawing you do, honestly, the better painter you become. Though they're not mutually exclusive. We talk like they are, you know, learn to draw, learn to paint, whatever. It's the same thing. I think one is more like uh, carving and the other is more like sculpting clay. Both results will get you there. And even these guys who made these sculptures, they would have worked in clay before they smashed the rock. You know, reductive and additive techniques. That's kind of the main difference, not just color in black and white. When we're talking about f being flattists, Anne was in here the other day and she was explaining to me that I was a flattist artist because I work on uh, two-dimensional two surfaces. I just think the flattist is very funny. So five minute break. Um, I feel like cheating here, but I won't. I'm going to sit back and stare at this. I realize there's areas I haven't touched. The next section will be uh, only 15 minutes. Uh, trying to bring uh, some closure to this piece in that amount of time so that I can switch the camera up uh, and we can look at the piece together and give it a little bit of a critique. I wish I did this in charcoal now. It is what it is. Camera. Hmm. Her head is too small. She's funny. Not funny. She's got hair going on back here that I didn't draw. Cheating now. Okay, three minutes. I gotta sit back. That's getting obsessive.
One second, here we go. Okay, okay. The longer I look at it, the more I didn't like it. Anyways, we're good. it's 8.36, so I can only go for 15 more minutes if we're gonna do a little critique just to keep to the time. Otherwise, I could go another hour refining things. Uh, I see enough mistakes that I definitely uh, wouldn't want to do that right now. Okay, well, I'm at the point that I wish I had done this in charcoal and softened a lot of stuff. But we have a lot of hard, weird edges happening in areas, actually it's supposed to be like that, that I don't want them. Um, so I'm just gonna try to bring this to a resolution. I have no hand drawn. Um, I can add a couple shadows here. So that's all. I got 15 minutes, really. This model's gonna move. Um, so that's all we can do, save ourselves. Maybe I don't like it anymore right now, right? This happens. So one thing you learn um, through the arts is, uh, I wouldn't say letting go, but knowing when to stop, you know, you gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away. Anyways, you also gotta know um, to kind of turn that negative self-talk off as well because fuck it, <laughs> who, you know, we're not so worried. Here, we can always erase and refine. I hadn't done anything to this arm, so uh, I got myself into a little bit of a bind, but even this knee, which I love, is just erased out and some tone. Um, it doesn't have to be more than that, really. This is more painterly for sure. Maybe I need to crisp up that edge. Do some sketchy stuff. Her foot's down here. Or hip. Yeah, I was going to say his foot, but he doesn't have a foot. He's got hooves. So we can just indicate that a little bit. We'll put his nail in. Who knows? What's nice about drawing from these sculptures as well is that the artist has already done the work. So we're, you know, in terms of composition and planning. So we are learning from that during this. When we're in a figure drawing situation, we might not have the best seat in the house, you know? So we're not also learning uh, composition like we are here right now. So this is nice that it's forced us to do this through video, I guess. There are benefits to it. We definitely can learn a lot from those who went before us. They get the designation master for a reason. And I hope one day to get that designation myself. belly button squint my eyes and there is I can put a line here um, there's fabric folds here is a lost edge though so just be aware of these things as you draw because you can get a little bit more efficient her head got too small. There are things now that I see. Um, but in a lot of ways, we also only learn from our mistakes. The things that let us down. Yeah, I'll still put this on social media. I'm not gonna be happy about it. Um, unless something miraculous happens in the next 10 minutes. Doubtful. But you never know. It is just practice. I think a lot of people right now it's been hard to create. Um, we haven't had a shared space where we can have critique together. There's not as much a motivation to do the work. Plus it's summer. Should be out there doing the gardening work probably more important, especially if you eat what you grow.
Oh yeah, chest hair. Seder. Not a hairless chest man. It's easy with drawing because I can put it on top, but if you're sculpting, you're actually sculpting everything around the hair. The hair being on top is the further out layer, so that's kind of cool. So he went through all that trouble. Redarken this here. Oh, sorry. Didn't realize my head was in the shot. I don't look up that much. I'm looking only at the subject. Very, very good focus. It's what we need. He's got, like, you can see veins and stuff in his arm here. I'll just smooth that out with my finger. Um, Hmm. Hmm. What can we do? Maybe I'll just erase out the lights on this hand. And that might be enough. Might be enough. There's a knuckle there. Let's go like that. It's cool because it's, it's blown out. You actually can't see the separations of the fingers so much see the outside of it a little fleshy bit there a knuckle here a knuckle here I mean it signifies it Do a little bit more line work in the cloth. I wish I could be like, just call in. Tell me what to do next. What should I draw next? going to soften up all my core shadows to help turn the form. It's not a hard light, so I don't get a hard line so much. Har hard line. Here, uh, you know, you want, might want to use some cross hatching to lead the eye. veins in the arm just go up Whoa. and then darken over top works for me looking for slightly subtler things now if you want to show a rim light along the arm just draw more dark beside it. There's like a little triangle reflection there. 
some crosshatch. Maybe emphasize the outside line there. Sure. We'll probably, I, I don't know, get a signature on here somewhere. Four minutes left. Maybe I'll lighten this area here. Kind of gets broken up by half tone here. What can we do? What can we do? So I'm just dancing around now. Um, no place equally, I guess. Just jump around, jump around, see what you can do. The whole thing's gotta fit together anyhow. We got that puzzle kind of solved. I'm gonna, because my foot didn't turn out as good as I'd like, I'm usually pretty good at feet, but this one's weird. Comes with its challenges. She's on this plinth, it's dark down here. Let it be drawerly. Let's you get away with more. Also, then the algorithm won't get pissed off. There's a lot of focus uh, up here, I think in the head. So I'm gonna just keep darkening up here. I got two minutes and I have to decide you know where to lead the eye and I feel like up here is probably good because I did do a good job on the face at least it's a little bit big um, but it'll take away from if there's lots of detail here and there's like less here it kinda drifts it away so we'll put in a little bit of time up here I tend to uh, go pretty fast normally. Maybe in the beginning you don't want to rush. You know, if I had another few hours I could finish this, but these types of drawings aren't a finished render. If they were, I would do them on Strathmore paper, Arches, BFK Reeves, you know. This paper is probably a dollar a sheet. Those go from 450 to 20 some odd dollars but you can erase the heck out of those cloth papers um, and so even that hoof problem I had made earlier that would have been easily to solve I could have fixed that no problem with a, a more robust cloth more expensive paper as well so we got about a minute left hopefully this is like Kind of like a uh, top chef or something like. Okay, plating. You're going to beat Bobby Flay here. If anyone out there knows what I'm talking about, they also have an addiction to food porn. Um, oh my God, we're going to run out of time here. Just softening this background at least. I should probably erase out a little bit on her knuckles, but hey, not going to happen this go, go around. Softening the background. I'd love to make it darker. But I also want to keep to the rules. It is what it is. Just darken this too while we're here. It's a bigger shadow under and behind uh, the patella. 12 seconds. Now the moaning starts.
No. Okay, well, that's all we have time for. So I'll give this a little signature here, and then I'm going to move the um, camera, and we'll look at the reference uh, beside the piece, August 5, 2020. Okay. Of course, we can pack up. I'm stealing some time here. Do a little cleanup. But I know you want to get back to your lives too. Let's just give us a little whip de woo. It's a technical term I just thought I'd share here. A little whip de woo. Just to give it a little more, oh, a little more something, something. All right. I am going to, sh I got to shrink the uh, source material on the screen here so that it matches the size of my drawing-ish. Post up the drawing, and I'll flip the camera around. Thank you for joining me beforehand. I appreciate it. It's motivating, hopefully, for you and for me. Let's bend this camera up. Oh my God. Okay, there we are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so our last few minutes, going tighter, do a little bit of the critique. Oh my God. Sorry for the wiggles, guys. I don't have a camera person. I have a very, very tight magic arm. So, hey, all right, it's me, I'm here. Thank you for joining me, for watching my hands work tonight um, I don't it's a little bit bigger but let's just look at some of the uh, architecture of the body that looks closer that looks maybe a little bit smaller maybe a little bit smaller okay and I'll move it up all right I mean we're fairly I'm fairly close um, I got to stand back for a minute here because um, I realize it's hard for me to critique without seeing both side by side. I guess I could laser point. I've got a little pointer here. So some of the artistic things, I guess, are um, the degradation down here. You can kind of see an indication of the foot. Um, my foot it looks too short. It's not long enough. My hoof looks too big. I don't know if these are the exact same size. I'm kind of unhappy with how I jumped in, but I, I made her face too small, so it started to shrink. I mean, it kind of makes it look like it's going away. Not so happy with how that turned out, uh, but we can't be happy with everything. And I also, I grew his head, and so he got more width in this area, for sure. Um, I think my chest looks much furrier probably because of the texture of the paper here. And it is really hard to see where this back arm is going. I think it's like right behind here. And so we can see through on the source material, we can see through to this uh, Donatello looking type uh, character behind this very effeminate man. Now that I squint my eyes, I, I think that I'm making this too dark. And uh, you know, I could erase out and do some other things to have more time to draw more fabric. This is uh, very, oh, and I don't like this, how this is traveling the eye through. Um, this is, uh, would be a 20 hour plus drawing, I think, if we did it in the style of uh, a bar drawing. Fortunately, we don't have to do that here. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, I like this paper enough but uh, it's not smooth enough for me. It means, whoops, sorry, that I have to, uh, I get all this texture and I, and I can't get it in there. Charcoal on the other hand would be a lot softer and I could smooth it out. I keep picking uh, materials that are challenging for me uh, just so that I can go home pissed off at night. But I will just take a snap, put it on social media, uh, Obviously, you can see the things. Your eye picks them out right away. 
and so does mine. Um, it's not just in an inability sometimes, you know, if you don't plan yourself out right or uh, take the time in the proper areas. Like I, I jumped in on the face instead of sculpting the main shapes and forms. And so she, her eyes should have been here where I put it, but I brought the chin up too far and that kind of squished it all down. Um, next week, we'll see what we draw. Anyhow, thank you for joining me. Please like, comment, subscribe, share all the YouTube things that make more people watch. Said we had 15 here. I hope it's more um, because this room often has 15 people in it. Late September, uh, the night sessions are gonna start again. Mid-September, I'm gonna have the Monday mornings start up under the constraints and rules with masks and all that. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll be re-updating the atelierartista.com website and you guys will get a newsletter and stuff will get rolling. And as long as we're safe and people are keeping to the rules and restrictions and keeping healthy, we should be able to uh, join together again. And uh, who knows, maybe when we do that, I'll still film so that those of you who want to stay home for your health and safety can. But thank you for joining me. That's all I think I want to say. I want chicken and waffles or something. I'm starving. I haven't eaten since noon and it's already 8.57. I'll give you three more minutes. But quite frankly, uh, I think we're done. And I look forward to seeing what you guys have. Please share and tag Atelier Artista or me, Brian Bunny Batista, if you are sharing your work. I appreciate it. I just realized now I'm talking to a camera, but the mic is facing here. You know, every week, silly, silly things are going on. Um, but that's it for now. Ciao. Have a great rest of your week. Pshh.